say in last week, the Amaya uh, heard about the walls of Jerusalem being torn down and the gates all burned. And he had a heart to go back and, and uh, rebuild the walls and asked the king. He gave him permission, sent them on his way with letters and, and men to help and this and that. So Nehemiah went back and scoped out the, the destruction of the walls. And, and uh, we, we were saying that uh, whenever there's a work of God that's being done, uh, there's, there's an enemy of God that shows up all the time, all the time. You cannot do a work of God without there being some conflict to go with it. Why? Because we live in a, in a world that is uh, controlled by the prince and the power of the air, which is the devil, and he hates God. And so if you have God in you, or you have a relationship with God, you know, the devil hates you, it's just the way it is. Uh, it's like, I hate the New York Yankees. And so if I see anybody wearing a New York Yankee shirt, it's like, I hate you. you know, I really don't, but it's like, I don't like the Yankees. So you tend to, that's where rivalries come into play. Anyways, Satan hates God, and he hates the children of God. And so whatever the children of God decide, uh, we're going to do a work. Whether it's a, a corporate work like the church or it's a personal work in your life, you say, I'm, I'm going to pray more, I'm going to go to church more, I'm going to study more, uh, I'm going to get closer to God. Well, get ready because the devil does not want to hear that coming out of you. So there's going to be warfare. And so, you know, of course, Nehemiah starts to work, he talks to the people, they're like, yeah, let's do this. They, he got them all stoked up, like, we will rise and build the walls. And, and they started to do the work, and who shows up? You know, uh, Sanballat and Tobiah and Geshem. And they started, the first thing, we said it last week, the first thing they started to do was mock them. And it's the same, the same application you can apply to your, your walk, whatever it is you're trying to do. The devil will come, and the first thing he's going to do is mock your step of faith. I'm going to pray more. Oh, really? You think you're going to pray more? Watch all the distractions I'm about to bring into your life. And they come, and, and there's a mocking spirit, and it says they mocked them, and they despised them. It says, and, the question, and then they question them. It says, like, what do you think you're doing? And basically, what do you think you're doing? You think you're going to do something, get closer to God? You think you're going to pray more, or read more, or you're going to talk to your relative about Jesus? What? Are you, are you crazy? And the projections come. And, and uh, that's the beginning of it. That's the beginning of it. And, and it's designed to do what? All of this was designed to do one thing, to stop the work of God. It's not a personal attack against Nehemiah. They didn't like Nehemiah because he was going to rebuild the walls and he was doing the work of God and so the devil sent them and energized them to stop the work of God. That was their goal, stop the work of God. When you take a step of faith or you decide to go forward, the devil's goal, and it's against you, but we don't wrestle against flesh and blood in Ephesians 6. We wrestle against principalities and powers and spiritual rulers in high places, spiritual wickedness in high places. And so um, it's not really against you personally, it's the work of God that he wants stopped. The problem is, is that it's usually God's people that are carrying out the work of God. So the, so the attack comes. So uh, Nehemiah... Uh, recognizes this and he answers them back and, and they come again and they, 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 this time they're full of wrath. They decide, oh, well, we're going to mock you, we're going to despise you, we're going to you know, chuckle at you and laugh. Oh, what do you think you're going to do? And then the walls start built, being built and they come back and now they're mad. And now they're going to conspire to destroy the work and to destroy Nehemiah. And, and Nehemiah recognizes it. And uh, he says, uh, you know, first he tells them, he goes, and I thought this was good last week, I still think it's good, uh, if you remember it, that he told them in chapter 4, like, or chapter 2, I'm sorry, he goes, you, you have no place or purpose or remembrance here in Jerusalem. 
like a word to the, to the devil, like a, and, a, and a good encouragement for us when we're contending with the devil, like he has no place in the new creation, has no authority, only if we give it to him. Only if we give him place, only if we give him authority, and there's no mention of him, uh, of, of anything about what he can do. He tries and everything, but there's no memorial of Satan saying, oh, remember Satan when he used to be a good guy? Remember Satan when he used to do that? No, he, it's over. And, and, and in the new creation, uh, we have the ability through our free will to just experience the life of God and the love of God. And, and to recognize that, yes, there's an enemy, but greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. So Nehemiah speaks to them and says, no, you know, nevertheless was the key verse. I think it's still I think it's the key verse in this book. Nevertheless, we made our prayer unto our God. That's what he did. The enemies came, they threatened, they did this, and it says, nevertheless, we made our prayer unto our God. Then we continue on, and all of a sudden, uh, Chapter 3, I can't get into chapter 3, but you should read chapter 3 on your own. Maybe I will uh, at a later date. Chapter 3 is amazing. Chapter 3 is about you, and it's about me. It's about the people who built the wall. And Nehemiah begins to name them all and tells what each one did. Yeah, we got to get into that later. Maybe later. <laughs> it's good. But I don't have time tonight. So anyways, uh, we, we left off. Uh, last week by saying um, that uh, they came back and Nehemiah uh, is telling them, uh, you know, we made our prayer unto our God, but then he sees them come back and the people come to Nehemiah and say, we, the, builder, the building is starting to slow down because there is much rubbish around the wall. And, and the enemy knows it and he's going to use it to come in and destroy us. And we talked about uh, the, what rubbish means for us, and I, I want to be careful with the term because we, we look at rubbish like the garbage goes out on Tuesday and it's all rubbish, worthless stuff. Uh, rubbish, though, is really, there was rubbish there because of they were building and they had scraps and they had this and that, but they were things that got in the way, hindrances that got in the way of the work of God. And so, in our lives, we have that happen. We call them the details of life. Uh, the Bible calls them that too. But it's, it's kind of like the rubbish that got in the way of the building of the wall. We have things in the parable of the sower. We have cares that choke the word. And we have the details of life that come in and slow down the word. And we have all these issues. It's, it's like a basic example is... Uh, I'm going to start uh, dedicating more of my time to God. Uh, all of a sudden, um, all these family issues come up, and my time is, is demanded of these other issues. Well, what about God? Well, I, what do you want me to do? I have family issues. And I'm not coming against families at all. There are family issues. But if we can't see the point that when we go forward for God in any area of our life, there's going to be opposition and there's going to be rubbish around the work of God, then, then that's what the point is here, and that's what we need to see. Distractions and hindrances are going to come, and the enemy uses those things, not that those things are bad in themselves, but the enemy uses those things to come in and destroy the work of God. That's what was the, the goal was. So all these things, we're going forward, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, and then the enemy comes in, and, and, try, and through the distractions and the details and the real issues of our life that, that, that are, are coming against the work of God. Uh, it's amazing, like I, I was, <laughs> I've been talking to people and they say, Pastor, it's amazing what happens to me on Sunday morning. It's amazing what things that happen to me on Wednesday night. I play, make a plan, I'm coming to church and then my boss says, no, you gotta work late. Or, uh, you know, some, somebody calls me, no, you can't go, you got to do this. This is, this is the reality of what happens. And the things are real. The rubbish was real. It wasn't like, I'll oh, just push it out of the way. No, it was real. It was slowing the building down. This is a real issue in your life. What do we do about it? Uh, what Nehemiah did was he recognized that the enemy was going to use it to stop the work. 
That's all. And so what he did was he said, arm yourselves. Arm yourselves. The, 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 the call for us would be the same thing. Arm yourselves. With what? The armor of God. The armor, what can I do? I can pray. I can put on the, the uh, hold up the shield of faith. I can put on the helmet of salvation. The devil's going to question every single part of my Christianity, my belief system, to stop the work of God. And really tonight, we could, I'm going to look at it in both ways as a church, but also individually, because he would love to get you to stop going forward in your personal walk for him. And then he'll attack the church, or he'll attack the church through that, too. So they made their prayer unto God. They, they, they began to carry their armor with them. And it's like a good, good lesson for us many times. You know, we know about the armor uh, of God in Ephesians 6, all the things, um, but we don't put it on. We forget to put it on. It's like, what good is armor uh, if it's just, it's just sitting against the wall. Like you could have a coat of armor, right? And and uh, it's it's there. It's over there in the chair, and it's de it's designed to protect me from the enemy. But will it protect me if I don't put it on? I know about it. It's right over there. I can see it. There's the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation. There's my shield right there. And, oh, look at there's a sword right next to it. What's the sword for? Oh, it's the word of God. I use it against the enemy. That's amazing. Jesus uses the word against the enemy. It works. Uh, I can use it. It's there. Oh, look, at there's a belt over there of truth. There's the truth of what, who I am in Christ. It's, it's the armor of God, Ephesians 6. Read it. But I, if I don't put it on, it, it's no good if it's sitting over there. It's nice to look at, good to consider, but if I don't put it on, and how do I put it on? By faith. I'm putting these things on. Why? Because the enemy's going to try and come in through the things around the wall to hinder the work and stop me. If I don't put those things on, then I, I, I give him place, I give him authority, and I actually give him a memorial in my life. And I let him have control and authority in my life where he has no authority at all, If I only if I let him. Because I'm in Christ, I'm a new creation. So it's very important for us to put on the armor. So that, that was last week. Now we're going to go into this, this week. Um, because they didn't stop. They, they got the armor. They were building the wall. If you remember the story, they're building with one hand. They got a spear in the other hand. And they said they did it from the morning until night. They were like that. Ready to fight the enemy when he showed up while they're trying to cement the bricks and everything. Like it's an amazing bird picture. Yeah, they're carrying swords on their side while they're mixing water and stuff to put on the walls. They're ready for battle and they're continuing the work. And it says that we made a watch. He called the people to make a watch. Uh, and this is where we're going to pick it up, I think. Uh, to make a watch uh, day and night. Be diligent about it. To watch day and night. That's another thing we stop doing. We don't put the armor on and we stop watching. And a lot of us pray, but we don't watch. A lot of us watch, but we don't pray. And we, it, it's, it's both of them together that works. Okay? So, in Nehemiah 4, uh, we'll start in verse 13. Therefore said I in the lower places behind the wall and on the higher places, I even set the people after their families with their swords, their spears, and their bows, and I looked and rose up and said unto the nobles and to the rulers and to the rest of the people, Be not ye afraid of them. Remember the Lord, which is great and terrible, and fight for your brethren, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your houses. This is uh, what we are doing in our, in our walk. It's a big part of our walk. Fight for your brethren. Fight for your families. We, we just had the time of prayer and issues came up. And in that prayer, we're fighting. We're going to God. Prayer is fighting for people, and in, especially intercessory prayer. Intercessory <coughs> prayer is when I pray for someone else. Maybe they don't pray because they're angry at God. Maybe they don't even believe, but I'm going to pray for them. 
And so I'm becoming an intercessor, just like Jesus is an intercessor for us. The Holy Spirit becomes an intercessor for us when we know not what to pray for in Romans 14, I mean in Romans 8, I'm sorry, he becomes an intercessor and speaks to God on our behalf. He knows what's in our heart, he knows what's in the mind of God, and he, he intercedes on our behalf. Jesus Christ interceded on our behalf. We have this tremendous ability to pray for family members, loved ones, who won't pray for themselves, who don't know how to pray for themselves. And so he says, fight for your families, fight for your mothers, your brothers, your loved ones. Uh, don't be afraid of the enemy, just be aware of the enemy and fight for them. Continue in prayer for them. Don't give up day and night. Have the armor on and know the enemy's coming. He's not just coming for you, he's coming for your family. He's coming for anybody that will be affect, that will affect you and your work for God. And, and we have this amazing ability with the armor and now with prayer. Uh, and that's even with the armor of God, it says, um, uh, after it says, everybody stops and take the sword of the Spirit, which is, uh, which is the Word of God. But then it says, praying always. Praying always with all supplications. That's part of the armor to prayer is a tremendous weapon. And so fight for your family members in prayer. Go after them, uh, go after God for them, and don't give up praying for them. And we, we have seen in this body through the years tremendous answers to prayer from, for drug addiction, for deliverances, for different issues, uh, for sicknesses. A lot of different things that we have prayed for for people, and maybe sometimes we forget, but we shouldn't. We shouldn't. And then Nehemiah simply calls the people uh, to, to that remembrance. Fight for your families. Fight for those who can't fight for themselves in prayer. Like, don't discard prayer as a, a you know an incidental thing that a Christian's called to do. It's a powerful tool, a powerful tool. The only problem with prayer is, as we've all have experienced it, this tremendous warfare around prayer. It's not easy to pray. It's easy to say a few words out loud or whatever. It's not easy to get into, you know, intercessory prayer before the throne of God and, and, and being still before God and waiting and getting through the warfare, the distractions, all the thoughts that are going to come, uh, the millions of th things that come at you when you say, I'm just going to pray right now. And we're like, watch this. <laughs> watch, the, watch how many thoughts I can put towards you in a, in a matter of a few minutes. And you got to fight through that. Why? Because he's coming for us. He's coming for us. And so we fight for our families. We fight for ourselves. And I want to jump to... Um, for another point in this to Nehemiah 6.1 because here we are, we're now into chapter 6 and they're still coming. The enemies are still coming, all right? So, real quick, now came in chapter, verse 1 of chapter 6, now came to pass when Sanballat and Tobiah and Geshem the Arabian and the rest of our enemies heard that I had builded the wall, the wall got built, the wall's done, he builded the wall and that there was no breach left therein though at that time I had not set up the doors upon the gates, that Sanballat and Geshem sent unto me, saying, Come, let us meet together in some one of the villages in the plain of Ono. But they thought to do me mischief. So I sent messages unto them, saying, I am doing a great work, so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease while I leave it and come down to you? Uh, yet they sent unto me four times after this sort, and I answered them after the same manner. Then sent Sanballat his servant unto me in like manner the fifth time with an open letter in his hand, wherein was written, It is reported among the heathen, and Gashmu saith it, that thou and the Jews think to rebel, for which cause thou buildest the wall that thou mayest be their king, according to these words. Oh my goodness, Gashmu said something. 
And, what, and that was designed to put the fear of God in Nehemiah. It is reported among the Jews that you are trying to do something underhanded here. And Gashmu, say that. Do you have a Gashmu in your life? Do you know a Gashmu? Imagine if you knew someone named Gashmu. What fun you could have with that man. Gashmu saith it. Have you heard uh, people uh, tell stories and they seem credible and they tell stories about, uh, uh, about something about maybe they tell a story about me or maybe they tell a story about the church or maybe they tell a story about something you're trying to do. Say, oh, you can't do that. Don't do that. I, 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 you know what? I'm going to go out and I'm going to I'm going to share the gospel with you. You don't do that. You don't want to do that. Well, it's not good to do that. People will yell at you. They get mad at you. They scream at you. You don't want to do that. Who's why? Gashmu said that it's not good to do that. Who is Gashmu? Who is Gashmu? It's like he's somebody important. You know who Gashmu was in this story? It was Geshem. It's the same guy. But get, for some reason, he had this pull with the people, and he had connections with people. And so he had a, he had a, a political party affiliation, and when, pe when he spoke, people paid attention. And so they, they thought to use his authority and his so-called uh, wisdom and, and, and cred credibility with people is to threaten Nehemiah and say, it's reported that you are conspiring against the king and Gashmu has said it too. Like that's gonna scare Nehemiah to wits and say, oh, well if Gashmu said it, it must be true. And this is what happens with you and I in our life. Uh, the devil has Gashmu's all over the place. And then they come against us and say, you can't do what you're doing. The, the, Let's talk some reason. Let's send Gashmu to you to talk some sense into you. I think I was I was sharing last week how when, when I first got saved and I started in this ministry, my, my family thought that I was in a cult and they were going to have one of those interventions for me. Because <laughs> Gashmu said something. <laughs> Gashmu is this voice that says stuff to people and, and it makes the work of God seem bad. And it's it's filled with lies because Gashmu was a liar. He was making up stories about them. So was in Sanballat and Tobiah. They were lying and they, Nehemiah knew it. And they sent to him five times, come and meet with us so we can talk this over. What was their purpose? Their purpose was to stop the work. And Nehemiah knew it, said, you just want me to come down off the wall, the wall that I've been called to build by God. I'm not coming. I don't care if you want to meet in the temple. I don't care if you want to meet in the plain of Ono. I don't care what you want to do. I've been called to do the work. And what you are saying about me is not true. Is not true. And there's the other part of warfare as you go along in your Christian walk to see is that people will say things about you that are not true. The devil will lie about you and it's not true. And you, you need to know and I need to know who I am in Christ. And I, I'm not doing something for, I, I, I remember uh, when we had the bikes and, and, and we were going to Nova Scotia and we were going up there to minister to people on the bikes and to share the gospel. And we had tracks, but you know who we had? We had Franny mm -hmm. with us. And Gashmu heard about it. And Gashmu sent word to the to the group up in Nova Scotia saying, oh, there's a group coming up there and they're going to take over your land and take over your business. And there, there was a huge meeting that had to happen because they, they, they were lied to about uh, what Franny's plots and intentions were. And it was a lie. And it wasn't even, and they had to sit down and we had to say, oh no, we're just a church group who is coming up here to win souls. <coughs> Literally almost had to get permission to go up there without having a conflict. But why? There was a gash move running around saying, oh, they're coming. Mm -hmm. And they got one of their guys that you know this guy, he's going to wreak havoc up here, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> That's what it was designed for. And it was the furthest thing from the truth. Yes, he was going to wreak havoc on hell, 
by sharing the gospel with Amen. people, you know, and, and it happened many times. But that's what happens. And don't be surprised by it. Think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which has come upon you, as though some strange thing has happened to you. No, more times than not, there's a gas move out there who's telling stories and one thing, getting people up in arms about the work that you're doing. And it's, again, it's not you, it's not me, it's the work of God. That's the whole purpose. They want the work of God to be stopped. They do. They want the work of God to be stopped. So they'll tell you whatever way they can, through its rubbish, through its words of people, through gas moves running around, through mocking spirits, through threatenings, all of it. Conspir There's a conspiracy uh, in the later chapter in this with, with one of the priests. He tries to conspire to get Nehemiah to come to the temple and really sand ballot and to buy her against it so that they can kill him. And Nehemiah has this tremendous discernment and says, no, I'm not coming. I know what you're going to do. I know this is for evil. I'm not going. And, and he doesn't go. And the wall gets built. And, and, and um, the, the amazing things that happen at the end of the chapter, maybe we'll get into some time. But my point tonight was, is this voice is always running around trying to get us uh, trying to hinder the work, trying to get us to stop doing what we're doing. The, all the things that happen in this book, Nehemiah, happen to us even today. Why? Because the devil is still around and he hates the work of God. We have a tremendous work of God going here. You know what? Gashmu will say, no, it's not really not really a work of God. It's just people meeting. What are you doing? Meeting in a house and people, what do you, what do you think you're doing? Blah, blah, blah. Mocking this, that. You, got, you don't even have a building. You have a house. Blah, blah, blah. I could go on and on with the things that the devil will project through people and through your own thoughts and everything. But when you say, no, we, we have a work of God. Amen. We are a group. And this is why I would like you to read chapter 3, maybe, on your own. And we'll talk about it sometime. But the work of God and the building of the wall, Nehemiah didn't do all the building. He just participated and did what he was called to do. But every single person uh, that, was in, that was called to go to Jerusalem and rebuild the walls, and they were from all the tribes and all the families, they came together, and it is noted, it, I mean, the entire chapter 3 is dedicated to telling who these people were. Oh, there's Peggy, and Peggy built the sheep gate. And, and next to her was Susan, and she built the, uh, no, no offense, the dung gate, because that's all I can think about. And the next, there were 12 gates, 12 gates. And next to her built the, these people, and they were specialized in stone building, and they did the gates and the locks and the handles. And next to them was Betty, and she built the, this gate, put the wood timbers up, and this and that. And next to them was was Donner and she brought gold and she overlaid all the timbers and it goes on and on and on through the whole chapter and the whole chapter is about these people that helped build the wall and there's one verse in there and it says uh, and this group came and they built this gate but their princes would not partake in it right it, why is that in there like all these people are building, everybody's got, it says in, in chapter 4, the people had a mind to work. The people had a mind to work. And they all came together and they put, pulled their resources and they dedicated and gave their, their own resources to the building of the wall. They, they, they built this wall. I, I got to get the dimensions of this wall because this, this is incredible, Pastor Mark. Um, you're a builder, so you know, right? This, this is. Has anybody ever seen the walls of Jerusalem? Like, yes, yes, yes. Uh, they rebuilt the walls and the gates, twelve gates, big gates, all of this uh, in fifty-two days. Fifty-two days, it was rebuilt. This is like unheard of. It was a massive amount of work, and they did it. And it says because the people had a mind to work. Right? They were all, let us rise up and build. When Nehemiah spoke to them, they were stirred up in their hearts. So they like, we can do this. Right? What's going to happen? Uh, the mocking spirit's going to come. The threats are going to come. The, uh, the questions are going to come. Uh, the enticing you to stop the work is going to come. Gash moves going to start showing up and saying all kinds of things. What is the, what's going on in that house down the street? Blah, blah, blah. 
You know, I think they got some, like that's a cult or something down there. Mm -hmm. Oh, check it out. Find out. Don't just say something and then don't listen to what's being said. Come and hear and then make the decision for yourself and see the work of God that's going on. See it. But it's a group work. It's like the church. It's not me. It's not Pastor Mark. It's not a few people. It's everybody got involved in it. Everybody must get involved in the work of God. This is what a local expression, a corporate local expression of the body of Christ is. Everybody, like the worldwide body is all believers worldwide, that's fine, but like here, we're in Peabody, we're, what are we going to do? What do you want us to do, God? Uh, uh, share the gospel, okay, we'll do that. Uh, you know, have, have a ministry, teach your young ones about me, okay. Uh, so that's Sunday school, let's worship me, okay, we have music, okay, let's do all those things. Proclaim the gospel, okay, let's put it on Facebook, let's find a way to do this. Okay, what's next? What's next? Oh, get involved in this, let God lead you to it. Okay, what is that show? God's going to show us what's that. When he does, the, the vision is brought to the body and the body gets behind it. Say, let's rise up and do this. Let's do this. Uh, how are we going to do it? I have no clue. I have no clue, but let's do this. This is exciting, you know? And whatever it form it is. Like we were talking the other day, we, we want to go and start having a, at least monthly luncheons at this restaurant down the street. Like instead of doing a wrap, we're just going to go to the restaurant, have fellowship, and be together, and, and eat, and, and have fun. It's going to be awesome. Like we, we have to do things like that as a body. Uh, the people have a mind to work. not. Not, uh, not getting caught up in, oh, I have to do work so God is the catch. No, I have to do this. He wants me to do that. No, this is not what we're saying. What is the work of God for an individual believer? Tell me that. I'll tell you that. Tell me. <laughs> the work of God for an individual believer is what? I gave the answer in the clue. The question. It's the belief. Right? This is the work of God to them uh, who I've been sent to believe on God. That is the work of God, to believe. What, what does that entail? I believe, and um, like we talked about that on Sunday, I think I believe, but help my unbelief. I have, me I have measures of unbelief, just like I have measures of belief. Okay, I, how, does, how, how do I believe? Faith. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing the Word of God. Uh, the more I hear the Word of God, the more I have a capacity to believe. Why do I need a greater capacity to believe? Because God is going to come to me and speak to my heart and my, for my life personally or corporately and challenge my heart to do something for Him that I would never have considered doing before. And if I don't have a foundation of faith, the work of God, being worked out in my heart and my soul by me hearing the word of God by faith. I can't explain the dynamics of it other than the Bible says if you hear the word of God, then faith appears in your soul. You begin to believe the words that you hear. Not from the natural man, it's like we, when we pray at the beginning, let, let us uh, be led by the spirit in this. Because the natural man's not even going to understand it. How does this work? I don't know. Does it matter? No. It, it, but it works. My faith has, has grown. I, in, in hearing messages, my faith has been born. I have been challenged to take steps of faith based on the Word of God, based on the work of God, based on uh, His Word in me, right? Um, faithful is He who calls you, He will also do it, right? He who has begun a good work and you will perform it unto the day of Christ. I take those promises, I take those statements, and I claim them when I feel challenged in my heart to take a step of faith. And I simply say to God, I, I can't do this. I don't know how to, I don't even know how to do what you're asking me to do. Okay, <coughs> just trust me, but take a step forward. You know, the, we always go back to the, the, uh, the, the illustration in Ezekiel, like, where are you in the water? Are you at your ankles? Uh, maybe God's calling you to go to your kneecaps. Like, whoa, the water's a little chilly, God, I don't know. Go to your kneecaps. Not, I'm not telling you to dive in from your ankles. Just go dive in. No, go to your kneecaps. Take, a, take the next step of faith. You at your kneecaps? Time to go up to your waist. Oh, it's, it's really cold at the waist. 
you know, that's a big jump right there. Uh, you're at your waist, go up to your chest, you know. But what, what did we find out in Ezekiel? Uh, there were waters to swim in. Those waters to swim in. It's a beautiful illustration of the finished work. And, and um, but also uh, the progressive work of God in our lives. Like he doesn't expect us to jump in over our head when we're only at our ankles, but he does encourage us to go to the next step, which might be our knees. And so he calls us as a church, as individuals, uh, to believe that that's the work of God. Are there works of God that we do corporately as a church? Yes, yes, but that's only after the work of God is being done in your heart. It's like God is not looking for, for um, slaves that he can drive with a whip and say, get out there and win the lost for me. No, you know, you don't have a big enough Bible. Go get a thicker Bible and memorize 25,000 scriptures by next Sunday. No, no, it, it's, it encourages us the wisdom from above is pure, peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated. And if, he, if there's a work going on in my heart, then the, the expression of that work will be manifested in the body because it's one God, one spirit, and we would be united together as we're collectively hearing the same word and the same message and getting built up in the faith and edified in love as we meet together. And so the expression of the body of Christ grows and redounds itself in Ephesians 4 uh, unto its own edification in love, which means what? Uh, I get filled with love, I share it with people, they get filled with love, they share it with people, and the, the church grows, and the body is edified, and people are one to the Lord, and family members get saved, and guess what? As that's going on, Sanballat and Tobiah and Geshem and Gashmu, of Geshem or Gashmu, is out there trying to hinder that work. Always trying to do that. So what, what do we got? We got the armor, put it on, we have prayer, uh, for ourselves, for, for each other, pray and we watch day and night because we know the devil is like a roar of iron seeking whom we may devour. And so we, we have we have what uh, more than enough to overcome. Nehemiah, the great thing about the story of Nehemiah is Nehemiah knew it. He knew it. And it says three times in, in four chapters that, that their design was to put fear in his heart. Right? They said the things, they did the things to make us afraid. Because when you become afraid, guess what stops? The work. The work. You stop hearing God. You stop listening to your emotions and your fears. So they would, they, their design was to put fear in their hearts so the work would stop. Right? Family situations, problems, this, that. We, all kinds of reasons why I can't go forward, I can't do anything for God. And listen, and we'll close with this. Don't ever, ever say, I can't do anything, right? Because it's the big, and you're listening to the biggest lie the devil ever told. To say, well, what can I do? I don't have the ability to go. I don't have the ability to spend. I don't have the ability, I don't have a talent. I can't sing, I can't do that. What can I do? You can pray. Everybody can pray. And prayer, is one of the most powerful tools that there is. Become a prayer warrior. A prayer warrior is not known many times. People don't know you're praying, but you're praying. And you pray all the time. And you're praying for people. And you're praying for the church. And you're, you're praying for the pastors. And you're praying for the work. And, and maybe nobody knows it, but you're a prayer warrior. And that is one of the greatest things you can do in the body of Christ. And anyone says, oh no, going out and, and winning the loss and this and that. Yes, but without prayer backing that up, you know, it's prayer that probably is what enables that to happen in the first place. Because there's so much warfare surrounding it that prayer is needed uh, and, and to pray for one another. So don't ever listen to that lie and believe it. It says, I, I don't do anything. I don't feel like I have any part in the body. You have a huge part in the body. And it's like, read chapter 3. It, everybody was involved in it. And if it's just for the fact that, hey, right now, all I can do is pray. That's what you can do right now, and that's enough. 
And maybe God will have you do something else down the road. Or maybe your prayers are just going to be what it needs. There's enough for what God's called you to do. But don't underestimate that power of prayer, especially in the church, especially in your family. Remember what it said, fight for your brethren. Fight for your sons, your daughters, your families. Fight for them. And we fight for them, not with weapon, kind of weapons, but with weapons of warfare or prayer. Prayer is that, that weapon that we use with the armor of God. Amen? Amen. 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 Okay. <laughs> Let's pray. <laughs> Father, thank you. Uh, if anyone's watching tonight and they've never received you as Savior, Lord, we ask that uh, you would consider that right now. If you're watching, just um, consider what we said today. Uh, tonight, uh, Christ came, paid for our sins. He's, he's the Savior of the world. We all need a Savior because we're all sinners. Can't save myself because I've sinned, come short of God's glory. Can't make up for good works. It doesn't satisfy God. It never will, never has. What can I do? I can receive the gift of salvation uh, by faith. By faith, as we said. Uh, I can call upon the name of the Lord. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, parentheses, as Savior, shall, shall be saved. If you call upon God in your heart to say, I would like to be saved, God, and, and have a serious meaning in your heart towards God about it, you will be saved. God will save you. Save you from what? Your sins. Save you from what? The curse that we talked about on, on Sunday. The curse of the law that brings death. Save you from that. Go to heaven when you die. Uh, have peace in your heart now while you live. Have the joy of the Lord come into your spirit and speak to your heart. Say this prayer if you'd like tonight. Dear Lord Jesus, I'd like to be saved. Save me. And really that's all you have to say. Mean it. Save me, Lord. Save me. Thank you for dying for me. Father, any said that tonight, we just pray that you would confirm it to their hearts, Lord. And for us who are saved, Lord, we, we, uh, we, you have called us here to Peabody to build a wall. Uh, we don't know what it's going to look like at the end, but, but we're willing to build, Lord. We're willing to have a heart that we will build, we will rise up and build, we will go forward, we will go forward in our lives, we will go forward in our personal decisions, Lord, speak to our hearts, uh, show us in our hearts what it is you want us to do next, Lord, without striving, without uh, feeling pressured, Lord, but just as a response to the overwhelming love and grace that you have revealed to us through your word, Lord. Uh, when the steps of faith are uh, called upon for us to take, Lord, give us courage to take them, Lord, knowing that you will meet us every step of the way, that you will put ground under us as we walk and uh, make our path straight, Lord, and our course straight. And use us, Lord, as you see fit in this area. And we thank you for it. In Christ's name, amen. amen. Okay.